Hi, my name is Will Dean. I am the Forest author. Today I'm going to share with you the actual query letter that landed me an agent. I hope you are well. We have snow in the forest. It's not cold, the snow is starting to melt. The stream outside of the hut is full of meltwater. I'm really excited today because I'm going to share with you the actual letter, the actual query letter, the actual cover letter from my slush pile submission that landed me an agent a few years ago. Let me read this to you and share my thoughts. This cover letter, this query letter is not perfect. I can assure you it could be improved in so many ways, but it was good enough. So agents didn't dismiss it out of hand. They read it, they thought, okay, fine. They moved on, they started reading the manuscript. That is what you want. You don't need a perfect query letter. You need a query letter that doesn't put up red flags to an agent. Okay, let's go. Please excuse me reading. So the message line of the email says, Sweet Rot by Will Dean. I'm not gonna call the book Sweet Rot anymore because we changed the title to Dark Pines. But it was called Sweet Rot back then. I'm not so good with titles. So let's call it Dark Pines. Dark Pines by Will Dean, open brackets, for the attention of Kate Burke, close brackets. Kate Burke is now my agent. Dear Kate, comma. Right now, dear X, you don't have to use the first name. I think you could use Mr. or Ms. if you get the surname correct. Make sure you spell the name correctly. Um, make sure you don't write dear sir or dear madam or dear sirs or dear sirs madam. Like, make the effort to understand this person's name. An agent wants a business-like cover letter, but it needs to be personal. It needs to be sent to them. You don't want to send them something that's clearly gone out to 55 other agents that day. So make sure you spell the name right. Make sure you make sure you get the title correct. Mr. Ms. is kind of safe. Um, and if you want to go on first name terms, that's probably okay as well. Okay, first paragraph. Let me just show you the letter quickly. Okay. I'm seeking representation for my first novel, Dark Pines, a thriller about a deaf journalist's battle to uncover small town secrets and work out who's killing the hunters of Utgard Forest. I'm submitting to you because of your success selling dot dot dot. So let's unpick this. I'm telling her it's my first novel. You probably don't need to do that, but I did. I'm telling her it's a thriller. I'm telling her the main character is a deaf journalist. I'm setting up the conflict, this battle to uncover small town secrets. So I'm setting the scene, the sense of place. Um, I'm telling her about the fact that hunters in Utgard Forest are being killed, which is kind of a unusual twist on the thriller genre. And I'm telling her why I'm submitting to her because she sold this book that I really enjoyed and I really respected and she sold it at auction. So that's why I submitted to her. Then I have a little four line kind of blurb that I put in here. An isolated Swedish town, a deaf reporter terrified of nature, a dense spruce forest overdue for harvest, a pair of eyeless hunters found murdered in the woods. So that's my four little punchy lines. That's kind of like a blurb or they're almost like, they're not shout lines or tag lines or log lines or anything like that, but they're, it's kind of like a blurb. It's kind of like the thing you might see on the back of a book, the back cover of a book. And I wanted those to be short and punchy and have an impact. I wanted agents to see those and think, okay, I know what this book is about now, really, really quickly. Agents have no time. They do not want to read long, dense paragraphs. This is my opinion. Feel free to disagree with it. I might be wrong, but I think most agents I know, they're really, really, really time poor. So if you can make their life easy by summing up what the novel is about in a few lines, it can't do any harm. Okay, next paragraph. It's week one of the Swedish elk hunt and the sound of gunfire is everywhere. Tuva Moodison, the town paper's reporter, is young, 
deaf and ambitious. When she gets embroiled in the story that could make her career, she stumbles on a web of secrets and allegiances that knit Gavrick Town together. Are the latest murders connected to the 1990s Medusa killings? Is someone following her? Why does the killer take the eyes? Tuva must face her demons and venture deep into the woods to stop the killer and write the story and then get the hell out of Gavrick. So that's a paragraph which really sums up the book. You know, I wanted conflict in there. I wanted intrigue in there. I wanted to allude to these earlier murders to give depth and to kind of layer up the story. So in what is that? One, two, three, four, five and a half lines. I really summed up the book. And in actual fact, that paragraph was really difficult to write. It took me a long time to understand what my book was about. And you'll understand this, if you've written a novel, it takes a while to be able to distill 80, 100, 120,000 words down into a few lines, but do it, make the effort to do it, because if you really understand what your book is actually about, then you can present that to an agent. And that paragraph, pretty much in the form it is there, was used by my agent to pitch to editors. It was used by different people within my publishing house to talk to bookstores and supermarkets and Waterstones and people like that. And then it pretty much made its way onto the back of the book. Here's the trade paperback version of Dark Pines. Let me read from the back cover. See no evil, eyes missing, a body lies deep in the forest near an isolated Swedish town. Hear no evil. Tuva Moodison, a deaf reporter on a small time local paper, is looking for the story that could make her career. Speak no evil, a web of secrets, and unsolved murders from 20 years ago. Can Tuva outwit the killer before she becomes the next victim? She must face her demons and venture deep into the woods to stop the murderer and then get the hell out of Gavrick. So it's pretty similar, right? It's like, it's not that... So that paragraph took me a long time to rewrite. You know, it's like when you're editing, you're self-editing your manuscript and you're rewriting it and you're rewriting it and you're rewriting it. That can be kind of exhausting. It can be soul destroying because you're you're making very small tweaks but they all add up they all make it a better thing and it's the same when you're writing a query letter and you're trying to distill your idea and your book into one short paragraph keep rewriting it keep making it punchier keep making it more interesting next paragraph dark pines is 105,000 words and i'm currently working on a sequel the novel has a diverse contemporary cast of characters and the style is Stephen King's Needless Things meets Gillian Flynn's Sharp Objects. I've attended the Festival of Writing in York and I'm active on Twitter. So this is just three lines in the letter. It tells Kate that my book is 105,000 words, which is, I think, a good thing to have in a cover letter because it just puts their mind at ease that you haven't written 400,000 words, you know, because that's a big thing for them to take on. And likewise, you haven't written 10,000 words and you're going to write the rest once you've got an agent, which is just not a good idea. It tells Kate that I'm currently working on a sequel, which I think kind of alludes to the fact that I'm taking this seriously. I'm a, I want to be professional about this. You know, I'm hard at work. I'm querying her, but I'm already writing the next one. I'm confident in this series. The novel has a diverse contemporary cast of characters. It's a contemporary book, so I want to make it clear that it's a contemporary book. The style is Stephen King's Needless Things meets Gillian Flynn's Sharp Objects. This was before Sharp Objects made it onto TV, so it wasn't that well known, especially compared to Gone Girl. So I thought it was a good comp title, partly because it's it's a book uh, based around a small town journalist, so there are some similarities between Sharp Objects and Dark Pines, but also, I like the fact that it wasn't obvious. It wasn't, you know, this is girl on a the girl on a train meets the girl with a dragon tattoo. Like if you're doing comp titles, try not to choose super obvious ones because they see that all the time and it doesn't really show that you're an interested reader. So try and choose a slightly less obvious book or TV show that still puts across the message of your story. And Stephen King's Needless Things I like because most people don't really know that book. I love that book. Uh, especially the first half. I love the small town claustrophobia of that book. And so that's why I put it in. I've attended the Festival of Writing in York. I have twice. Uh, it really helped me and I think it again shows that I'm committed to my craft. I'm committed to doing this thing. I pay hard-earned money to go to that festival. 
um, shows that I'm kind of I'm this is this is a serious thing for me and I'm active on Twitter I don't think you even need to write that but I am active on Twitter it can't do any harm so I put it in then a final short paragraph about me and this is something that I think is important don't write too much about yourself they the agents are mainly interested in the book I guess an exception to that might be if you're writing memoir or something that's very attached to your specialist skill or experience but for most novelists a couple of lines at the end is all you need about yourself this is where you would include any prizes you've won for short stories or flash fiction uh, courses you've been on if you've done a mfa masters in fine arts creative writing course i haven't done anything like that so this is what i wrote i'm 37 years old i'm 39 now i'm 37 years old a dedicated writer while living in London, I travel to Sweden twice a week to build the woodland home where I now live. That extreme commute offered me a unique insight into the distinctive character of the Nordic people. So that gives some kind of indication that I have this weird UK-Sweden angle going on. It hopefully shows that I'm quite focused and extreme. I can get things done. You know, I flew to build the house in the woods. And that I have this kind of outsider perspective on the Nordics and on Scandi people. And the last line, the full manuscript is available upon your request. Thank you for your consideration, which I just think is kind of courteous and businesslike. And it shows that I've written the whole book and it's there when you're ready. Best wishes, Will. There it is. One page. And I sent that off to 20 different agents. Uh, I personalized all of them. Obviously, I changed the email address and I changed the name, but I also changed the reason I was submitting to that particular agent. And maybe I would add a couple of other words if I'd had any history with that agent, if I'd ever met them at a writing festival or something like that. So my overall advice is keep it punchy, keep it concise. Put in words there that spark in the agent's mind. So make sure when you're talking about the story that you describe the protagonist in a couple of words that make them sound really interesting and original. Make sure you outline the main conflict of the story. Writing something like this, writing a paragraph about your book is a discipline. It's a difficult thing to do. You kind of need everything you have in a novel. You need an arc. You need to introduce this world, to introduce your main character, to introduce the conflict, to set some kind of scene, to, to have some kind of atmosphere, and to have some kind of conclusion or some kind of hook so that an ager might get excited. But do not worry if your cover letter is not fascinating or you don't have anything, or you, or you haven't been shortlisted for some major prize. It doesn't matter. What the agent is looking for is no red flags. That's all the agent is looking for. Something interesting, no red flags. Punchy, doesn't take up a lot of time one page maximum and then you want them to look at that and then go straight into page one of your manuscript and we'll talk more about this in another video but page one of your manuscript super important because you you don't want to lose the agent at that point in conclusion don't make any mistakes when it comes to submitting to the agent make sure you submit in the right format to the right email address you spell their name right make sure your cover letter is as punchy and as interesting and as concise as you can make it. And then likewise with your sample pages and your synopsis, which I will cover in future videos, make sure they're as good as you can make them. And then it's all down to luck. And I wanna wish you the very best of luck with all of your querying. If you have any questions about my submission package, about my query letter, about your query letter, just write your questions down in the comments below and I will get to them. Thank you for watching. I've been Will Dean, Forest author, and I will see you again in another video very soon. Bye-bye.